going to go over the notes for the start of Unit 2. This is Section 2.2 of the textbook, Conditional Statements. The objectives are I will be able to analyze statements in if-then form, and number two, I will be able to write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of conditional statements. First off, let's say what a conditional or if-then statement is. An if-then statement is sometimes called a conditional statement. The portion of the statement immediately following the if is called the hypothesis, and the part immediately following the then is called the conclusion. So the hypothesis is represented by the letter P and the conclusion by the letter Q. One important thing you're going to need to know is how to write this in symbolic form. We're going to say if P, then Q, and we're going to have that arrow in between it. The arrow means then. Again, P is the hypothesis and Q is the conclusion. Whenever we find out what the hypothesis and conclusion are, we don't include the words if and then. So for our examples, we have to identify the hypothesis, hypothesis and conclusion for each of the following. So we look for our keywords if and then. So again, the, the words following the if are the hypothesis. So the hypothesis is it is cloudy. And remember, that's represented by the letter P. The conclusion is the word following the then. So it's it will rain. And again, that's the letter Q. So for the next one, we have numbers, but it's still the same thing. We look for the keywords if and then. The word following the if is the hypothesis P. So the 3y plus 7 equals 10. And the word following the then is the conclusion Q. Y is equal to 1. We can also take a statement and turn it into an if-then statement or uh, conditional statement. So this example says an angle of 40 degrees is acute. How we split the hypothesis and the conclusion is to look for the verb. So we look for the verb. This here is is. And then we start it off. If... I'm going to write my conclusion, or sorry, my hypothesis in red. An angle measures 40 degrees. Then, and I'll write my conclusion underneath it, it is acute. So I want you to try this one on your own. Remember, you have to split it where the verb is, so you're going to split it on the verb lie. So we'll move on to the second page. Another definition you need to know is truth value. So the truth value of a conditional is either true or false. We can find out if a statement's false if we come up with a counterexample. So example three says, if the name of the month starts with the letter J, it is a summer month. So is it true or false? And if it's false, give a counterexample. When we think of the months during the summer, we have June, July, and August. So this is false because August is our counterexample. August begins with the letter A, not the letter J. This, no, this one here, try number three, that you're encouraged to try this, but I think you might struggle because we haven't talked about triangles so much. The counterexample comes if we have three points all on the same line. So if I have point A, B, and C, I can never connect those three points to form a triangle. They form a line. So we would call these collinear points. So that would be the counterexample for number three, which says you can connect any three points to form a triangle. Next, we have to define negation. The negation of a statement has the opposite meaning 
as well as the opposite truth value. So if we take a statement that's true and we negate it, that makes it false. And if we sta take a statement that's false, when we negate it, it becomes true. So that's what it means, to, negation means. The symbols are important. The negation of a statement P is the opposite of the statement and is represented by this tilde P. This tilde P means not P. So this symbol here, the tilde, means not. So we already learned a few symbols. We've learned P, Q, the arrow means then, and we just learned this one here, which means not. So the conditional is always if P, then Q. So remember, P follows the if. Today is Friday. And some of you might struggle to see the conclusion here because it says we do not have school tomorrow. That's our conclusion. Even though there's a not in there, it's the original not. So we don't put not Q because Q currently has a not in it. I think it'll make more sense as we go down. So there are four big things here. There's the conditional, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Whenever we have the converse, we change the order or we flip it. Change order is good because those are the first two letters in converse. So what we do, our P is now on the other side and our Q our conclusion now follows the if, and our hypothesis follows the then, so we flip it around. So we say if Q, then P. The inverse, we insert nots. So we take the original conditional, and we insert nots. So what we're going to do is not P, then not Q. And whenever we look at the conclusion here, we see we have do have as opposed to do not have. So whenever we negate a negative, it becomes a positive. So in your English class, you should be familiar with double negatives. Lastly, we have the contrapositive. You change the order, insert not. That's how you're supposed to remember the contrapositive. So the symbols are going to be not Q, then not, sorry, I've been using blue for Q, not Q, then not P. So again, we put a not, where there was no not before, we had is. And we put, we take away the knot where there was one before. That's what it means to negate it. And we flip it just like the converse. If you remember those symbols, it should be helpful. On the last page, we're going to be asked to write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. So the converse, remember, is if Q, then P. So we just flip it if two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure. So for the in inverse, remember we put in not, so not P, then not Q. So if two angles don't have the same measure, then they are 
dot congruent. And lastly, we have the contrapositive, which was not Q, then not P. So we're going to take the converse and just put knots in it. So if two angles are not congruent, then they don't have the same measure. So I'm going to highlight the hypothesis in yellow. So we see how we move that around. The conclusion I'm going to do in green. So we flip it with the converse. The inverse is the same order. And the con contrapositive, we change the order. And I'll make sure our knots are sticking out, which are in the inverse. Don't and not. Put those in purple. Not and don't. So that's how we change things from the start. I see that I didn't highlight my original conclusion. There we go. So try number five on your own. We have logically equivalent statements. So what this means is the conditional and the contrapositive have the same truth value. So if an angle is 120 degrees, then it is obtuse. This is true. So that means right away the contrapositive also has to be true. So the conditional and the contrapositive are equivalent statements. That means they're either both true or both false. The same can be said about the converse and the inverse. They are equivalent statements. So the converse says if an angle is obtuse, then it is 120 degrees. This is going to be false. It can be true, but remember, all I have to do is come up with a counterexample to show that it's false. So if an angle is obtuse, then it's 100, 120 degrees. It could also be 150 degrees. So that's my counterexample. I can come up with a lot more. The inverse is if an angle is not 120 degrees, then it is not obtuse. I already know that's false. The last thing we have are Venn diagrams. These should be pretty familiar, familiar to you in a number of different subjects. But we can write conditional statements from a Venn diagram. The box or the circle of the box that's on the inside is your hypothesis. I've been using red for hypothesis, so I'll change the color to red. And the box on the outside is the conclusion, Q. So you write if. It is a rainy day. Then it is a cloudy day. So that's it for the notes. We're going to have additional practice on this. Hopefully this made sense and please come to class prepared with any questions.